Hello, I'm Gord Pollock, and this is the first in a three-part mini-series on electronic bagpipes. Uh, I've realized in the last little while there's been a real growing interest in electronic bagpipes, more people wanting to get involved in, in having them. So I thought it would be useful to have an overview um, for those that are maybe in the market uh, to, to sort of go over what's, what's out there. Uh, so let's try, dive right into it. Um, First one I'll talk about is the Fager Strong, and it's available in two versions. There's a Techno Chanter and a Techno Pipes version. Uh, the Techno Pipes uh, having just more sounds on board, uh, so it's a little bit more money. What I like about the Fager Strong is that it's the smallest uh, and most portable of chanters. I mean, it's great for traveling. You're on airplanes or you're on trips. You can slip it in your backpack. You've got headphones and away you go. The downside to it is that uh, ergonomically it's a little bit hard to change uh, some of those parameters like if you want to have volume up and down you have to hit a sequence of uh, the piezo sensors on the front to accomplish that. But still, uh, it, it's, a, it's a great travel. I think that's, that's the one benefit of the Fagerstrom. The next um, chatter that I'll talk about is the Dager and it's got two versions out. The original Dager 1 was probably, you know, 15 odd years ago it came out. Dagger 2 is then a, a modification on the original design that's been out for a few more years than that. Um, what I like about these chanters is it has all of the controls along the side of the body of the chanter itself. So you can actually change the volume and the pitch and, and uh, a lot of things, you know, a lot easier on that. Sounds that are built onto the chanter are quite good. I find, um, you know, there's a bagpipe sound, a small pipe sound. I think they do a, a medieval pipe as well. There's, there's some other kind of sounds on there. The next chanter that looks very similar to the um, uh, the Dager chanter is called the Solda P2. Uh, maybe a little bit less known. Um, what the advantage of this one is, it has its own little speaker sort of built into the side, which as small as they are, you know, if you're practicing on your own, that's kind of useful, or you could use the headphone jack out. The sounds are a little bit more limited on that chanter and maybe not quite as good as that are available on the other pipes, but but still uh, a reasonable um, uh, chanter for, uh, for playing. Then you jump up into the series that's offered by Red Pipe. And, and of course, there's a variety when you go to their website. Um, this is the Red Pipe Classic. Again, it's got all the controls on a convenient block on top. Uh, inputs, uh, sorry, outputs for um, headphone and, and quarter inch for running to a big amp. Um, what I like about these on stage is that they're super comfortable. Um, you know, you can actually play them and it feels like you're playing a, a bagpipe. You've got something to actually hold on to. Um, again, piezo sensors, although they've released a new chanter in the last little while that is optical electric. And we're going to talk about that now as we get to the next chanter, which is the most recent addition to the, to the range, which is Murray Blair's uh, electronic chanter. And he did go immediately to optical sensors. The advantage is a lot of people found that with the, the piezo sensors, if their hands were dry or if they're in a drier climate, they would get errors. You know, the, the, the sensors wouldn't pick up the movement of their fingers. And you could solve that by putting lotion on your fingers. Um, but a lot of people still uh, complained about that with the piezoelectric sensors. <clears throat> with the optical electric sensors, it's based on the light that's reaching the sensor as you lift your fingers off and on the chanter. So um, a lot more accurate. Certainly you don't have the problems with the dry skin. Uh, you do have to be aware though that under different lighting conditions, um, these sensors are going to respond differently. So there's actually a way of going into the chanter and, and adjusting for the amount of ambient light that there is. There's also a way of going in and, and adjusting the individual sensitivity of each of the sensors so that you can adapt the chanter to your playing style. That's super useful. The other great thing about the, um, the Murray Blair chanter is that um, it's completely upgradable. Murray does a really good job of his site at introducing new sounds and it's very easy to update your chanter yourself via the uh, USB plugin. So that's the Murray Blair chanter. There's a few chanters that I don't have in my collection. One is the Ross chanter and there's um, it's been around a long, long time and I, I recently realized that they've uh, added some new uh, chanters to their range for sale. Then uh, Glencoe makes a chanter called the Black Watch E Chanter. It looks very similar to a Fagerstrom. Uh, seems to have a limited range of sounds as well, but it's quite inexpensive. I think it's in about the $200 range, something like that. And then another oddity is the Oztote out of Australia. Uh, I know nothing about it except for the fact that it's, it's relatively inexpensive. I would imagine it has limited connectivity and limited sounds as well. 
um, because it looks very similar to a bagpipe that I in fact made myself. And these plans are online on the internet if you search E Chanter. Um, this one's made out of uh, sprinkler components out of the um, plumbing aisle at um, uh, Home Depot. Um, and it's all centered around the Arduino Nano chip. It's a programmable little chip. They're available online for like five bucks kind of thing. So all the plans are online. If you have a soldering gun, you could certainly uh, uh, fit into that range. I made another version where I used an old uh, practice chanter and just made my own piezo sensors out of um, uh, furniture tacks. Um, so that's quite, quite doable for those that are a little bit tech inclined. Another pipe that's on the market, which may not interest Highland Pipers, but I, I sort of put it out there for completeness, is the V-Pipes, which is an absolutely fantastic Illin pipe synth, hyper-realistic. With these optical sensors, you can actually slur off the notes, which is a really interesting um, side branch to optical sensors. And then the Mac Daddy of them all, of course, is Hevia's MBS 300, which is basically just a MIDI controller. There actually are no sounds built into this pipe. You have to either use an outboard sound um, controller or a laptop to accomplish that. Completely geared for the studio or a stage performance. So that's uh, the Hevia pipe. Okay, so you bought your pipe. What are you going to do with it now? Uh, for most people, that means we're going to use headphones. We're going to use it to practice. Uh, we're going to take it with us on the road. So portability sometimes is an issue. But one of the questions that was posed by a member was, okay, how do I play with other instruments on, on stage? Well, for that, you're going to need an amplifier. And amplifiers, of course, come in all different sizes. If you're playing in a very small space with, with quiet instruments, some of the smaller portable speakers or the pocket amps might work. But ultimately, I think you're probably going to need a little bit more volume. Um, there's a couple of uh, companies that produce battery-operated um, amps. Um, Fender makes the amp can. Trainer makes a small battery-operated amp as well, which gives you more volume. Certainly a more realistic sound. Uh, but if you're going to be playing in a large space and you need to project more volume, you're going to need a bigger amp again too. Maybe not a half stack, but something that's a reasonable size. You're also going to need a way of connecting your electronic bagpipe to an amp. So you're gonna need a cable that is stereo headphone jack at one end and guitar phono plug at the other end. So what it's doing is it's summing the stereo signal down to a mono signal. Otherwise, you may get drones, you may get chanter, but you may not get both. So a lot of people have had questions about that. These cables are available at Long and McQuaid. They're, you know, eight, nine dollars, something like that. But that's critical if you wanna start hooking them up to an amp. The other thing that I like to have for a stage performance is a standard guitar volume pedal. Again, they're available at Long & McQuaid, but I find this very useful because when you've got it in line between your uh, electronic bagpipe and the amp, you can actually control the volume. You don't have to reach over and shut the amp off or whatever. Another option for that too, Murray Blair actually makes a cutoff pedal, but it's strictly an on-off pedal. You don't have the, way, the ability to control the volume. So it may be useful in some instances. I think you'd probably find that um, the volume pedal would give you more options. Okay, and just to prove that yes, you can make a bagpipe for 30 bucks, here's the second prototype. We'll turn the amp on, turn the chatter on. There's the effect of that uh, volume pedal. Okay, that's all for video one. Uh, in video two, we'll move on and we'll talk about some digital connections and using these electronic bagpipes in the studio. Um, that's great. Thanks for joining.